Yeah, I'd say probably one of the key features was um, the the change in drug use that tended to result in the development of bladder symptoms. So typically, what we found in our study, and there seems to be a similar picture in other research as well, is that people tend to start off using ketamine, um, you know, recreationally and maybe on an occasional basis um, within a defined social circle. So they they tend to use ketamine with other people, with friends, maybe with older siblings and so on. But um, they then tend to, over a period of time, develop um, tolerance to ketamine. So what tends to then happen, certainly, you know, in, in our study, is that they tend to use ketamine more frequently and in increasingly higher doses in order to get the same kind of dissociative effect that maybe they had when they first started using ketamine. And generally, what we found in our study was when this change in use happens, so it becomes more of a regular thing, so often using ketamine on a daily basis, then they tend to develop bladder symptoms within a certain time frame after that. It kind of varied in our study in terms of how often or you know the, the time frames for this to happen but typically this was between around six to 24 months of this change in use to becoming a, a, a daily thing and in some instances um, I think there was one young girl who developed bladder symptoms within about three months of this change of use so from the occasional to to go into daily use but generally that seems to be the link of taking ketamine more regularly and increasingly higher doses that tends to be the trigger